Allow me to present for your consideration the following email I received from another listener. Hi, Warren. I'm an urban explorer living in your old stomping grounds of Jokeville. I first became aware of your channel when I watched your video on the Blue Ghost Tunnel. I was intrigued by your stories about the silo and abandoned farm at Fourth Line and Spears. So one night, my buddy Logan and I went to look for it. The farm is long gone, and on the land where it used to stand is an abandoned factory that used to manufacture automotive parts, which was almost as good as the silo for satisfying our urge to explore. We parked the car along the nearby service road, then hiked across the fourth line, entering the fringe of wood which still exists there. The abandoned factory turned out to be huge, huge, far bigger than we expected, and we walked around looking for a place to gain entry. Eventually, we noticed a door on the loading dock, which was not only wide open, it had actually vanished, leaving a gaping black maw a gaping black maw which beckoned to us. We should have stayed out. But you know, curiosity killed the cat. And yeah, you did try to warn us. We were already impressed by the size of the building from walking around outside. But we were still amazed by the extent of the interior, a vast cavernous space with an upstairs level. It was dusk outside and the interior lay in thick and gloomy darkness. Thick and gloomy darkness. Unfortunately, we hadn't brought any flashlights or headlamps as we thought we would be exploring outside. So we were reduced to using the limited light from our phones. Luckily, the interior was largely empty, all the heavy machinery having been removed. But still, we were careful where we stepped in the inky blackness. We hadn't penetrated far when I heard Logan sucking his breath and whisper, Bro! I whispered back, What? For an answer, he pointed his phone at the floor. The dusty floor was covered in footprints. Is someone here? He said quietly. Maybe, I answered. But it could be that other people have explored this place. Or, or maybe it's security. But let's keep our voices down, eh? As if to emphasize the point, BANG! Someone or something dropped something heavy on the metal floor above our heads, the sound reverberating in the relative stillness. There's somebody up there, Logan hissed. Maybe. Listen. We listened, and listened hard, and could make out the barely perceptible tread of someone or something moving across the floor above our heads. I decided on the direct approach. Hello? Hello? Is there somebody there? I said in a loud voice, which echoed in the darkness, and provoked another crash slash clash on the metal floor above. They were obviously messing with us. Logan wanted to leave, which would have been the sensible thing to do, but I was pissed off. In one dark corner, there was a metal staircase leading to the upper level 
and I headed for it, bawling out, Hey! Hey, you up there! Come down here! Or I'm gonna come up! Big mistake. Big, big, big mistake. We both heard the footsteps move slowly across the floor, then begin begin to head down the metal steps. I stood on the bottom step and shone the light from my phone upwards and nearly dropped it. Dropped the phone. Someone was coming slowly down the stairs. Something was coming slowly down the stairs. Uh, A woman without a head. I think Logan shrieked then. I I don't know. I was too busy running. We cursed the sheer dimensions of the building, and time seemed to stand still before we finally found our exit, only to have to run through the now darkened woods. Oh, why? Oh, why did we park so far away? (sighs) The woods were a nightmare. We somehow... We somehow lost the path and were blundering through and against trees, getting scratched all over. And the whole time, we could hear this strange moaning noise off in the distance, like the howling of a banshee. We could even hear it over the rumble of traffic on the nearby highway. But eventually, eventually we found the car and peeled out of there. We were silent for several minutes. I think we were in shock. But finally I said, and my voice was pretty shaky, Did you see it? Did you see what I saw? Yeah, but I don't believe it. I I don't believe it, and I saw it. I saw it. Uh, I should have taken a pic. I mean, for Christ's sakes, I had my phone in my hand. (sighs) Yeah, but maybe it's better you didn't get a picture. Then it would mean it was really true. We cruised around, trying to calm down, me driving on autopilot. Then Logan said, I think we're being followed. Not that woman. No. By an old car, a a black one, like out of the 1950s. I glanced in the rearview mirror. The car was a massive Buick. I recognized the grimacing grill. At first, I wasn't sure if the old Buick was tailing us or not. But after about 10 minutes, it was obvious that it was after us. I tried a bunch of evasive moves, but I wasn't able to shake the old Buick until I headed off onto the Queen Elizabeth Highway and lost it in heavy traffic. But whoever was driving it knows where I live. I've seen the old car drive by my house several times. They're stalking me, keeping watch. But. But who are they? And what is going on? Did we encounter a night floater? Can they really walk around without their heads? Can they? Floating heads, a.k.a. night floaters or floaters, are paranormal entities reported from various places in Canada and throughout North America. The name refers to the ability of certain individuals to detach their heads from the trunks of their bodies, the heads then being able to fly or float at will. They are said to attack unsuspecting victims, biting them, and sometimes even killing them. They make a moaning sound when far away, which fades to silence 
as they approach their victims. And yeah, they can direct their bodies and walk around without a head. They like old cars too. Old black cars. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,021 subs in 2021. Till midnight. Cheers.